last day's signs and wonders with Mel Barn. We thank you so much for tuning into our program, and we thank you for all that you do in helping us reach out and touch the world with the miracle working power of God's love. Now I want to take you right into this service, and I want to talk about the power of imaginations. I guess we had titled this, Imaginations um, Comes Before Having. And so we'll validate this with the Word of God. So I want to talk about imagination. And sometimes it really scares Christians because the way the occults and, you know, and we're not into New Age, we're into New Testament. <clears throat> and I want to show you, and I don't have time to do it this morning, but I'll give you um, some homework. If you'll take the word believe, like Mark 9.23, the Bible says all things are possible, Jesus said that, to those that believe. That word believe is rendered in the New Testament 264 times, that exact word. And in the Greek, it has the same meaning as imagination. It has the same meaning as the word imagination. And so all things are possible then to those that will imagine. Imagine what? Imagine God's word being truth. That's the reason why Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four that whatsoever things you desire, of course, in agreement with God's word, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive and then you will have. Same word, believe. So we could render this and it would be absolutely accurate if we use the word imagination. And so whatsoever things you desire when you pray, imagine that you have received it, then you will have it. Amen. And so I want to talk about this a little bit. In fact, like I said, there's, that's rendered, that word is rendered 264 times just in the New Testament. And so that's a strong doctrine. Jesus said you need to have three scriptures in order for it to be a doctrine. 264 means it's a powerful doctrine. We've been cheated out of the laws and doctrines of imagination. The word faith is rendered 244 times in the New Testament, and it has the same meaning as imagination. The word think is rendered 19 times in the New Testament, and it in the fuller meaning in the original language, has the same meaning as imagination. So that renders over 500 times in the New Testament scriptures validating imagination. That's one of the most powerful doctrines in the Bible. And that's the reason why the devil has fought it so hard because if we Christians get a hold of the doctrine of imagination, we are going to change our life and we're going to change others' life. Just imagine that 3 John verse 2 is a reality where God says, Beloved, above all things, I wish you would prosper financially. Just imagine that you have so much money that you can tithe a million dollars a year. Just imagine that. And most people... Most Christians that I know, especially if they come to a church like ours, if they made $10 million a year, they'd be glad to give God $5 million. How many thinks you can live okay on $5 million a year? Well, just imagine God's Word is truth. And there's not a shortage of money. There's plenty of money. We just need to bring it out of the kingdom of darkness and bring it into the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, I want to just let me just share some things with you. In Genesis in chapter 11, verse 6, God said this. Moses didn't say this. God said this. If you'll read that whole chapter, you'll find that there were a barbaric people. They were heathen. They were not a God-reverencing people at all. And they said, we're going to build a tower that's going to go up to heaven, and we're just going to go on to heaven with our own means. And then the Bible says in verse 6, God said this. Turn your Bibles and look at that. God said that if I don't stop these people, anything they would imagine to do would not be restrained from them. Now, evil people have a vain imagination. And God said, He said, 
The laws of imagination will work for them. In essence, God put the laws of imagination on the face of the earth to bless humanity, but we can take that, slaw, that law if we're the heathen and it'll still work for us. Just like electricity. God put the laws of electricity to bless humanity, but people can take it and kill people with electricity. But it wasn't designed to kill. It was designed to bless. And so if it'll work for a heathen, how much more will it work for us? Now I want to show you, you need to turn your Bibles here to the book of Genesis in chapter 30. You'll find a story where that uh, uh, Jacob worked for his father-in-law for 20 years, and his father-in-law abused him horribly. And so he pretty well worked for him for free for 20 years. Now Jacob's married and has kids and so forth, and so he goes to his father-in-law and says, look, um, I'm going to, I want to leave. Can you at least give me a little bit of something in order for me to leave? And so his father-in-law says, well, basically they made a deal. Jacob says, can I at least have this? All of the cattle that, the cattle that are no good, the cattle that are spotted, have streaks through them, those are considered, and, and in those years, what they would do is the cattle that were strong and healthy and vibrant, the, most, the best cattle, they made sure they would be all one color, be totally brown or totally white. And then those that were spotted and have things like, you know, those were, they, they pushed them off and they were the weaker cattle. And so Jacob says, just give me all the weak cattle. Give me all the ones that are spotted and those that have streaks. And that'll be my pay. His father-in-law says, well, I'm, you know, I'm, that, that's a good deal. I'm getting off easy. I give you all my junk. And then, you know, then you can leave. And so here's what Jacob did. Now, here's what he did. He took some uh, branches of sticks that had spots and streaks on them. And he put the sticks right in front of the feeding troughs and the watering troughs where all the animals, all the healthy animals would go. And he said, this is what Jacob said. He says, when these healthy animals, the healthiest that uh, my father-in-law has, Laban has, when they see these spotted sticks, streaked sticks, then they're ba they'll conceive. And they'll have babies that'll have spots and streaks and I'll have the strongest and the best cattle of the bunch. And it happened. And I'm going to show you. We're going to read this and show it to you. And here's what I want to say. God put the laws of imagination to bless humanity. And if it'll work for a cow and for a goat, it'll work for me. Right? And it happened. Let's read here. Just, now you go home and read the whole story, but I'll just highlight something. Look here in verse 38. And he, it was Jacob, he set rods, which is branches, sticks, which he had pulled before the flocks in the gutters, which were the troughs, in the watering troughs, when the flocks came to drink that they should conceive. So in essence, they seen something and they conceived. There is a more powerful truth than a natural conception. It's a supernatural conception. If you can see it in the realm of the Spirit, that's supernatural. And so, Frank and Connie, you need to see Skye lifting, lifting her hands, praising God, speaking in tongues and working for God. See her in the future with a man that she's married to that is born again, filled with the Holy Ghost and loves God. Begin to see these things. Begin to see right now. Begin to see your house paid off. Begin to see your bank account. You look at your bank account and you see an excess of $2 million in there. Say, well, you know, that's pretty extravagant. I'd rather shoot for the 10 stars and only get one than to shoot for one and just get a little flake. 
Okay. It says that they should conceive when they came to drink. Jacob knew about the doctrine of imagination. Let's go on here. Verse 39. And the flocks conceived before the rods or before the branches and brought forth cattle, rings, rings straked, speckled and spotted. Verse 41. Verse 41. And it came to pass when whosoever the, when whosoever the stronger cattle did conceive that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. With their eyes they conceived, not with their natural body. They conceived first with their eyes. Now, the word eyes in the original language of the Bible, this is a verbatimly what it says. They think, they think I'm going to have a baby that's spotted. They thought it. And then it goes on. It says, fundamentally and spiritually, their faculties conceived. Mentally and spiritually, their faculties said, we've got it. Amen. This is so powerful. If it'll work for a cow, how many believes you're smarter than a cow or a goat or a sheep? The law, and, and that's the reason why the devil fights so hard the doctrine of imagination because when the body of Christ, if I can just get a few people here this morning and a few people in West Palm Beach to start using the doctrine of imagination and God says he watches over his word to perform it, I'll tell you, we don't need nobody else. We'll, we'll shake this whole world. 2 Corinthians in chapter 4, I want to really encourage you to go home and read that whole chapter because in that whole chapter, continually that it speaks and gives a lot of examples of validating that we today have the glory of God. Even in our bodies, it says, we have it. God paid the price. And that word glory in the Greek, the Greek word is doxa, which means the reputation of God, the splendor of God, the power of God, that we've got it. However, just because it's a truth spiritually is not a truth naturally. And so, in essence, what I want to say, let me say it this way, that we want to take a spiritual truth and we want to bring it out of the realm of the spirit and bring it into the natural. Just like the cows. They had to first birth it or conceive it in the realm of the mentality, in the spirit world, before it could be a reality physically. And you've got to, and now let me just say this also, just because of the fact that you have conceived it spiritually is no sign that you're going to have it physically if you abort it spiritually. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 strongly validates that we have the glory of God. And then verse 17, again, it ends that verse talking about the eternal weight of of glory. We've got it, the eternal weight of glory. And then it goes on in verse 18 and tells us how we get it out of the spiritual into the natural. Look at this. While we look not at the things which are seen. Think about this. We have the glory of God, the reputation of God, the power of God, the splendor of God, while we're looking at things that aren't seen. Now, how can you possibly look at something that is not seen with your spiritual, mental eye, which is your imagination? I just imagine. You, you, you can imagine you see anything. You can imagine. We have this eternal weight of glory while we're looking not at the things that are, that are seen. You're not going to get it by looking at the natural. By using your natural eyes. You'll not get it. But at the things which are not seen. So we're looking not at the things which are seen, but we're looking at the things which are not seen. They're not seen with the natural eye. You're only seen with the spiritual things. For the things which are seen 
are temporal. But the things which are not seen, they're eternal. The Word of God is eternal. If you can see it, you can have it. Amen. The laws of imagination. Yes, if you need a miracle, I want to encourage you to come to one of our miracle services. And our miracle services are absolutely every Sunday morning, either in uh, Winsville, Missouri, or West Palm Beach, one of our churches, that we have a miracle service every single Sunday morning. See, Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, verse 20, He said that God would confirm God's Word with signs following. Well, the word signs in the original language of the Bible, it says this. The fuller meaning is supernatural miracles in the senses realm proving that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so every single Sunday morning, whether it's in Winsville, Missouri, or West Palm Beach, one of our churches, that I'll be preaching the Word of God every single service and every single service, God confirms His Word with healings and miracles. So if you need a healing, you need a miracle, come and receive. God will be greatly glorified and you're going to be blessed. Looking forward to seeing you in one of our miracle services every single Sunday morning. Here's what I see, John. I see a spirit and he's like in your neck region on the left-hand side, and he goes down, and he's sort of a slender spirit, but he has a big hand, and that hand just grabs a hold of your heart. He's the root of the problem. And so are you having symptoms now? From the accident? Yeah. The only thing I think I'm having is dreams. Dreams, <laughs> okay. So uh, you haven't had any physical, you're not dealing with any physical? Not anymore, I did last year. Okay. But right now, there's nothing physical that you're, that's not good. Okay. Well, let's just get, you said you had a stroke about three years ago. Yes. And it's on the left-hand side. And that's where I've seen that spirit. Maybe he's trying to come back. I don't know. We're going to do preventative medicine. Thank you. Amen. In Jesus' name, we take authority over that demonic spirit on the left-hand side of John. And we command uh, that spirit to leave. You leave, John. You've stolen from him. You've cheated him for many years. In fact, most of his life. And now then you try to kill him with a stroke. And so in Jesus' name, we command that spirit to leave. Okay, well, how are you doing now? So it's on the left-hand side. How's that left eye doing, John? I believe it's getting better. It's still a little bit out of focus. Okay, keep looking. Seek and you'll find, Jesus said. Okay, close. Put your, put your right hand over that right eye because I don't want you cheating. <laughs> so look at me, John. How many fingers do I have up? Four. Could have you seen them that clear before? I'm not sure. Only, the only, really what I see is the top part of your fingers. The bottom part where it comes to the palm. Okay. That's the only part that's out of focus. Okay, well, do it again. Do it again. Mm. Now look. One. How much better is it looking, John? Better, because uh, you got <laughs> these knuckles down. Okay. Fingers are down. God's a good God. I see on the left-hand side of your bo body, and what it is, it looks like a, it's a spirit, but it looks like a rod. It looks just like an iron rod, and on the left-hand side of your body, and uh, he is the the controlling factor. And that's what it looks like. It looks like an iron rod. And, um, but, you know, I, I, I would think, uh, no sense in me doing that. I'll just tell you what I see. He looks like he's over about an inch and a half from your spinal column to the left-hand side of your body. But he covers most of your body on the left-hand side. Have you been to the doctor? Uh, I have been to the doctor. What does the doctor say? Um, basically, a few things. Um, main thing is kidney failure. Um, I have an issue in my right eye. Um, 
they call it renal detachment. There's uh, vision issues there. Uh-huh. Um, and that's caused a whole bunch of symptoms. Everybody stretch forth your hand towards this gentleman. In Jesus' name, we take authority over that spirit. Leave him now in Jesus' name. And we command that spirit to leave in Jesus' name, and we command that area to totally relax. When you relax, you're surrendering, you're accepting God's miracle power in Jesus' name. Okay. So, okay, now here's what I, you, you told me you were having problems with your right eye. So put your left hand real good over your left eye. So you can't see. In fact, put, put your palm up there because we don't want you cheating. Now look around. Look for what you couldn't see before and focus on how much better. And the more that you focus on better, it'll just, it, it can be just instant. It'll just, it depends on you how much determination you've got. Well, maybe 20%, okay. but I'm just going to keep focusing on okay, it. Okay, okay. Was it dif difficult to see from a distance, you mean? Is that... Yeah, well, um, I have this anomaly. So if I focus on something, it's literally distorted. Okay. And what I can say, too, is the other day, um, I was just randomly reading something. And, you know, I was, I was doing something on the iPad. And, the, and I was looking right at the number seven. And uh -huh. normally that would have been distorted. And uh -huh. it came into vision. Okay, now keep, what does that say? Chapter 31. What does it read? And it came to pass in the 11th year, in the third month, in the first day. Okay. How much better is that? It's, it's better. How much? It's better. It's about 50% better. See, it keeps growing. Jesus said it. He said, if you seek, you'll find. Yes, I am so extremely excited because recently God has given Don and I an extremely powerful vision to do a very huge work of God right in Winsville, Missouri, and in West Palm Beach, Florida. However, that uh, the Lord has also told us it's impossible for us to do it by ourselves, so we need help. And so, if you would like to be in full-time ministry as one of our leaders, then you need to call us. Uh, the prerequisites, you need to be born again. Jesus needs to be the Lord of your life. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And... Uh, you need to go to our website, melbon.com, and look at our statement of faith and be in agreement with it. And you really need to be within driving distance of Winsville, Missouri, or West Palm Beach. And so we're excited and we're looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, call our secretaries, one of our secretaries at our office, and that number is 636-327-5632. And tell them that you're interested, and I promise you that we'll get back with you. You be blessed. Yes, we are living in some absolutely fabulous days. God said in the last days that he would reveal knowledge as never before. And so I have some of that knowledge here that I want to pour into your life. And uh, it's offer number 57 for $35 or more if God deals with you to help us out so that we can do more as far as reaching out and touching more lives with God's unconditional love than then do so, and if, if not, it, it's $35 for offer number 57. Let me talk to you about this offer. Number one, that uh, we have two CDs, two teaching, uh, two, two hour teachings of uh, the power of looking into God's mirror. And um, every morning, all of us, the whole human race, we look into the mirror and we make changes to ourselves. Uh, so that we can be better, be a better person. Well, there is a revelation that God has shown me how we can learn to look in God's Word so that we can change things in our life. And it's absolutely awesome, and we can change, uh, get rid of the bad things and only have good things in our life. And it's real simple, and uh, it's just learning to look in the mirror of God's Word. The same way you would look in a mirror and make changes, you can look in God's Word. And so this will really help you. And along with this offer that we have my latest book, it's only been out for maybe two months, something like that. And the title is Holiness, the Doorway into the Supernatural. This is an absolutely awesome book. And at the very cover of it, you see a picture of Moses separating the Red Sea. 
Well, Moses were, was able to separate the Red Sea because of the power of God's holiness in his life. And there's a lot of uh, misconceptions, misunderstanding of God's true holiness. I'm telling you, it's an awesome lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that uh, gives you fulfillment and satisfaction beyond the human imagination. And God wants us to have this lifestyle. And as you study the Word of God, you learn how to surrender into God's holiness. And then also, once you step into this lifestyle, that also it, it causes you to be in a position to where that you can release supernatural power, the, the supernatural power of God, just like Moses did. Now keep in mind, Moses was of the Old Testament. We have a new covenant established upon better promises. Jesus paid that price. And so once we learn to walk and live in God's holiness, the supernatural powers of God are available to us. And so this is offer number 57, and it's for $35 or more. Um, however God speaks to you, we'll, anything more that you send us, I promise you that 100% will go uh, for reaching more lives with God's unconditional love. And uh, so you can order this order uh, by calling us. You can call our office at 636-327-5632. Or if you go to melbond.com, our website, you can order it that way. Or you can write to our office, which is Agape Church, P.O. Box, 306, Winsville, Missouri, 63385. And so I just claim that the riches of God's goodness will be lavished upon your life as you begin to learn to look in the mirror of God's Word. And when you learn to surrender to God's holiness, it's, a, it's the same lifestyle that God has, and He wants us to have it here on this earth. He did say, pray this way, that it be on earth as it is in heaven. God wants that for you. You be blessed. Thank you for watching Last Day Signs and Wonders with Mel Bond. For more teaching and information, check out our website at melbond.tv or write us at Agape Church, P.O. Box 306, Wentzville, Missouri, 63385 or call our office at 636-327-5632. Keep up to date by friending us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Last Day Signs and Wonders is made possible by the generous gifts of our partners. Please consider becoming a partner and help Mel Bond take this message of Last Day Signs and Wonders around the world.